Now, in a very first story, the Fix the Country movement has described as welcoming the Supreme Court ruling which quashed an injunction granted by the High Court to stop campaigners from embarking on a demonstration. Reacting to the ruling in an interview, campaigner Yao Moses insists the rule of law has prevailed. The Supreme Court quashed the High Court order which prevented the Fix the Country campaigners from embarking on a demonstration. The apex court presided over by Justice Yapo indicated that the High Court's order was in error. In restraining the protesters, the High Court stated that they are not to hit the streets until such a time that the appropriate authority lifts the COVID-19 restrictions on public gathering. The campaigners insist this order is unlawful as under the High Court's rules, injunctions granted without arguments from the affected persons ought to last for just 10 days. It therefore ruled that the judge erred. The court proceeded to quash that portion of the order that barred the group indefinitely. The group says the decision by the court is a win for democracy. Rule of law has prevailed over tyranny. It is very welcoming. We are glad that the Supreme Court has seen reason with our reason to, to, to gather and express our civil and our civic duties as a people to express our pleasure with the direction of the nation. This ruling will send a strong signal to people in authority that the rule of law still works and that no one's flimsy excuse of not wanting us to gather will be tolerated in this country. The Ghana Police Service on Thursday, May 6, secured a restraining order from an Accra High Court presided over by Justice Ruby Aite to stop the planned protest. The restraining order follows the affidavits filed by the police against the conveners of the protest march pursuant to Section 16 of the Public Order Act 1994, Act 491. The campaigners then took the protest to social media, generating hashtags and piling pressure on government to fix the challenges. From students, politicians, celebrities and social commentators, the hashtag resonated with many and has compelled government ministries and agencies to organize press conferences to account for their stewardship. Well, the Accra Regional Police Command is also urging the public to disregard any call to demonstrate by the convenience of the Fix the Country protest march without complying with the provisions of the Public Order Act 1994, Act 491. Well, there's a statement that's just come through from the Ghana Police Service Public Relations Officer uh, signed this one. DSP, if you are thinking, uh, the Supreme Court ruling by Justice Yarpel on Tuesday, June 8th, did not stop the police from the constitutional rights. According to the statement, the Supreme Court only quashed an earlier order granted ex parte by the High Court on May 6, 2021, restraining the convenience of the Fix the Country protests from embarking on a public demonstration, uh, saying that the decision of the Supreme Court was based on the indefinite terms in which the ex parte order was made. The police is also saying the Supreme Court declined to restrain the Ghana Police Service or their agents, assigns work men or work women from unlawfully interfering with the constitutional rights of the conveners of the Fix the Country protest from embarking on a public demonstration. Essentially, so that's that's what's captured in the Ghana Police Service statement uh, now. And uh, this is in reaction to the issues as raised or captured in that particular ruling by the Supreme Court earlier today, which has been described indeed by many as a win for the rule of law. Oliver Baka Wamawa is one of the conveners, in fact, the leaders of this Fix the Country uh, campaign. And he joins me on Zoom for a conversation on this and what the police is talking about now. Oliver, good evening to you. Thank you for your time this evening, if you can hear me. No, I can hear you. I hope you can hear me as I well. can hear you clearly. So this is the latest from the Ghana Police Service, that yes, uh, it's a win for you uh, at the Supreme Court today, but it does not give you the right to organize a protest as has been indicated by some of your members. Your reaction to this uh, latest from the Ghana Police Service? Uh, first of all, to clarify, the police is saying that people should disregard any call to demonstrate uh, by the conveners of the Fifth the Country protest march 
without complying with the provisions of the Public Order Act. And first of all, I, I think it, it's helpful that when police are putting out these kinds of statements, they have somebody read over it a bit, you know, to let it percolate. I understand the rush to, to issue these statements out, but it would be helpful if they did get somebody to read over them. But first of all, at no point has faced the country ever told anybody to demonstrate without going through the process of law. If you remember, in the whole conversation, we have consistently gone to the courts and gone through the proper legal process. So I don't know where that knee-jerk reaction is for. And Ghanaians need to be mindful of this attempt to craft the exercise of the constitutional right as if it is something illegal and out of bounds. We've had, and this follows in the line of practices the way we've heard them talk about, we are mobilizing with a cool mentality, that we are being militant. And all we have said is that we want our constitutional right to be respected. So it follows in this same direction. And I do not understand why the Ghana police continues to militarize the right and freedom of assembly. This is kind of the conversation that we are continuing to have on this. But I think it's a long conversation that's going to go ahead uh, going forward. So essentially, what you're saying is that, yes, indeed, you have not said anything contrary to what the court is, is saying, then you are not going to organize any protests after this to, today's ruling. No, what I'm saying is that we are not going to organize any illegal protest. I mean, we think that it, is, it needs to be made clear that this is about the lawful exercise of constitutional rights. And the lawful exercise of constitutional rights, we have always been committed to the rule of law. The reason why we are here today talking about this is that we have the due diligence and we have the patience to believe in our judicial process and to believe in the justice of our courts in the Supreme Court. And we're only here because the courts recognize that and I have held that. Right. So that's where the conversation is about. Although, so at no point okay. have we ever said we are organizing the protest outside the limits of the law. We've always talked about organizing it within the limits of the law. Okay, hold on a bit for me. I've been joined on, on the telephone by uh, DSP Afia Tenge. She speaks there for the Accra Regional Police Command. Uh, thank you very much for your time uh, this evening. So th your statement is hinged on a reaction to a call by this group that fixed the country that there would be a protest march. You are saying that nobody should respond to that protest march. Where did you hear that there has been any protest, a call for a protest march by this Fix the Country people? Uh, DSP, if, if you're thinking. Yes, uh, good evening. What the police put out there in some few hours was only to state clearly what the Supreme Court earlier ruled on today. And so um, we understand, and uh, personally, I also saw some headlines that were making the rounds on social media that uh, people showed um, um, to be pre prepared for their demonstration um, task, uh, fix the country, because the Supreme Court has quashed police's uh, injunction. And so the police are giving the fix the, the country demonstrators uh, through their lawyers the relief to go on that demonstration. So looking at that misleading headline and uh, also the contents of the stories that we read, it was necessary and appropriate that uh, the regional police command also state clearly what actually transpired at the Supreme Court today. So if you go through the release that was, um, has been um, released or made public, I think that you would um, appreciate the, the, the sequence of events that took place at the Supreme Court this morning. Well, but listening to all of the organizers whom you, you heard on Zoom, he's actually still with us, that they ha have not at any point communicated to the Ghanaian people who are part of this Fix the Country that they're going to do anything outside of the law. The communication that they should prepare in their explanation this evening is in anticipation of the ruling for the substantive case. Is that wrong to do? Yes, I think that um, the release that was made public today also goes on um, to notify or draw the attention of the general public 
based on a certain headline that we have monitored, personally monitored, and the police have monitored today after the Supreme Court ruling. And so I personally, I have not heard they going about calling their followers to a demonstration. Right. But there are media headlines going around or making rounds in social media saying that the Supreme Court has quashed out police's earlier injunction and so they are giving relief for conveners to organize and uh, call their followers to a demonstration. So if you see headlines like this making the rounds and misleading the general public, I think it's in the right order and place for the police to draw the line clearly so that people will really appreciate what actually transpired at the Supreme Court. But I just wanted to make that clear that they telling their members that they should prepare is not wrong, is it? No, prepare means what? They said they should go to demonstration. The headline says that he has given relief for them to go on a demonstration. But so did, if, did if you hear the, somebody, you hear headlines that is saying that they are giving relief for them to go on a demonstration, I think that is wrong. That is did, did state That is not point. what actually transpired at the Supreme Court. And we cannot allow that headline to be making rounds on social media. I think the police have been fair here in our, in our um, clarification through our press release. Okay. Because the, 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 the uh, news reports that we were monitoring indicated that we are giving relief to organizers to go on the demonstration, which is not true. And so if the police takes out clearly what goes, what went on in the Supreme Court, I think that the police has also not urged. The police only sought to clarify some of these issues so that the general public would appreciate and uh, know what actually uh, went on. So I think that uh, we, we are not wrong um, at this position. Well, so the, the, this article you saw, did they state clearly, or did they state clearly when this demonstration that you are now warning against is going to take place? Because what the convenience are saying is that every organization was going to be within the remits of the law so that the preparation communication they were giving out was in anticipation of the ruling on the substantive case. So this article, did this state exactly when you, what you read that they were going to have a demonstration? I think our discussion should not be going back and forth on this. As to whether it stated categorically when or how, I think for now it should be irrelevant because we are monitoring on social media. Let us not forget that the Fix the Country demonstration actually began on social med media gathered the momentum that he gathered or, or, or also on social media. And so we are still, we are still monitoring what is going on. And the police is not oblivious of what is happening on social media. And if we are monitoring events like this where people are being called, people they are getting the understanding that, yes, people can now go on the demonstration. I think it is false from, from its initial position. And so we have to disregard that. I don't think that we should be going back and forth on this. It is very clear and it is not a relief what? for the six the country demonst demonstrators to go on demonstration. And that, I think that is very clear at this point. Yes, Mr. Fiatinga, thank you. I'm going to hold on for me. But, Oliver, so the point that the SP Fiatinga is, is saying, I, I get the point that you didn't hear him, they communicated this because they had monitored on social media a story related to some of your members telling the public to prepare or to be organized for a protest after today's ruling. And so they had to respond or put out this communication to clarify that there is no way you can organize that because of this ruling that's just happened today. That's why they put out this communication. Oliver. Uh, first of all, again, I, I would not, I would be very careful in saying that DSP, if you're thinking, uh, it's misleading the public. But I'm, I would shudder and I'll put it to street proof to produce whatever article she's claiming to refer to. But what, whatever the case may be, and I've said this very clearly, that it is important in the police communications that they have somebody read over the things they put out because it might do them a lot of good. First of all, uh, you remember when they, before they even went to the Supreme Court, they had even issued as a letter relying on expired law and doing things by heart. 
Now, even in this statement they put to get, together, in paragraph three of it, they are saying that the Supreme Court refused to restrain them from unlawfully interfering with our constitutional right. Like, is, are they suggesting that the court is saying that they can unlawfully interfere with our constitutional right? It doesn't make sense. Sometimes it is helpful, and these are public institutions, and they learn from practice, you know? And I think that we also have a responsibility in helping them understand the legal issues. But let's, let's not get boggled down by the mistakes and the knee-jerk reactions of the police. It's something we anticipate. We do hope that they are a bit more proactive when it comes to people who have substantively breached the law. As we are going to be tomorrow filing a complaint against the people who were at that legal funeral, which was organized by, the, by a, a lot of people in the executive and, and so many other elites in our society. And we do hope that they have this kind of you know, reaction to it when those issues come before them. It will garner public confidence in the police service. And that's something that we are committed to. Now, right. let us come to some of the points she has made uh, just quickly uh, before we move on. It is important that this decision by the Supreme Court recognizes that COVID-19 cannot be a basis for indefinitely restricting somebody from going anywhere. So that, that's a very important thing that we need to make clear. And we do know that we are anticipating to continue to bring up that COVID-19 argument again. So it is important that we put that in context because it is important and I think the Supreme Court decision recognized that exercise of constitutional rights must be measured against public health. And this is our argument from the very first start. When we went to the police, we gave them clear guidance. We relied on right. so many public health experts who told us how a, a protest can right. be held. They disregarded all that. And yet they were the ones directing traffic for the breach of COVID-19 protocols uh, in a few days ago. So it is important that public institutions act with integrity. That's all right. we are saying. Oliver, thank you very much for your time this evening. I appreciate it. Oliver Mamawa is a member of the Fix the Country campaign leadership talking to us there.